There was a mom in Texas who claimed that she needed a life-saving medical treatment of obtaining an abortion because her child had been given a fetal diagnosis of something called trisomy 18. And if you guys aren't familiar with trisomy 18, what you need to know is very simple. Trisomy 18 is a chromosomal uh, syndrome. It is not a death sentence, despite what everyone in the media is saying upon birth. There are a significant number of children that have lived for several years with trisomy 18 but this mom out of texas basically said i need a life-saving abortion treatment in the state of texas because my child has received this diagnosis and they are dead on arrival they have absolutely no chance of surviving and i believe the specific term that was used is my child has been told to me by physicians is incompatible with life. The state of Texas denied her ability to get an abortion because of this, which is a very nuanced story. And we're going to go through all of the details. And then she ended up traveling to another state to obtain the abortion. Anyway, Joe Biden, our president of the United States, has just announced this week that he is inviting Kate Cox, this mom, to be one of the very special guests that will stand up and be applauded and have all of the attention on them at the State of the Union that's happening one month exactly from tomorrow. I can anticipate well in advance, a month in advance, that federalizing abortion most likely is going to be at the top of the agenda list for the Biden administration, especially facing any level of prospect that they might not have a second term uh, on the off chance that the Republican Party would be able to elect a Republican president back into the White House, I would anticipate that they're probably going to take action on abortion, even if they can't through Congress, through an executive order, which is highly unconstitutional and wrought with problems. And we'll get into all of that on the stream. I'm just giving you the 30,000 overview first. And here is why, because he has invited this extremely controversial, extremely nuanced, wildly rare case of when certain people believe an abortion should be necessary and when others don't to be highlighted front and center at the Capitol building for the State of the Union on March 7th next month. Now, first of all, let me just say before we get into all of the really extreme nuances of this story, it breaks my heart and this story should break your heart, too. It is heart-wrenching and difficult and makes you angry when you think about these situations where women are being told their only option is an abortion. And my sympathy and my compassion goes out to this woman, Kate Cox. I don't know her. I don't hold any particular ill will against her. I think she, like millions of other women every single year, was duped by the healthcare professionals that she is supposed to trust with bad information or incomplete information and didn't have the opportunity for truly compassionate healthcare that I advocate for and fight for every single day. But I don't think that an abortion should have been the number one thing everybody was running to in this particular scenario. I think it did a massive disservice to both the mother and the child, not to mention the father and the community at large, for issuing a death sentence to a child because of a diagnosis of disability. And that's happening across the board. So again, this mom's name is Kate Cox. She lives in the state of Texas and the Center for Reproductive Rights typically something that I probably wouldn't agree with their publications on, decided to write up a whole profile on Kate Cox that came out on January 22nd. So a few weeks ago, Kate Cox tells her story. And here's how the media is portraying this particular story having unfolded, that Kate Cox was denied emergency abortion care by the Texas Supreme Court. She sat down with CBS Sunday morning. We're going to watch a clip of that here in just a second. And The Daily. The plight of Kate Cox, whose request to get an emergency abortion was denied by the state of Texas, has drawn widespread attention across the country. Kate Cox is at the heart of one of the most contentious cases since the overturning of Roe v. Wade. I actually totally agree with that, although I disagree with why it was so contentious. Although Cox had received a fatal fetal diagnosis, that's actually untrue and I'm going to argue with that today, and continuing the pregnancy would pose risks to her health and future fertility. Also disagree with that. 
The Supreme Court of Texas ruled in December of 2023 that it would not allow her to get an abortion in the state. Cox was the plaintiff in a case called Cox v. Texas, a case brought forth by the Center for Reproductive Rights and was forced to travel out of the state to obtain the care she needed. She said, I wanted to be here in Texas, close to home. This is the hardest thing I've ever been through. I wanted to come home, cry on my own pillow, hold my babies. She's already a mom of several children. Be near my doctors. That's what I thought about the most going into this. And again, my absolute heartfelt sympathy is going towards this woman because if every single one of your doctors is telling you you're never going to be able to have a child again, you're probably going to die if you carry this pregnancy to term and your baby is guaranteed to not survive childbirth. It is a fatal fetal diagnosis. If that's all anybody is telling you because that's how bought into the lies of the abortion industry have become with all of these physicians and healthcare practitioners, etc., I totally have sympathy for that. But I wish that there were more people just willing to tell the truth about fatal diagnoses for children in the womb, which, by the way, most of the time are not correct, about living with children with disability, that it's not going to ruin your life. It's actually going to bring so much beauty and color and joy to your life that you never could have experienced before and that you are worth more than putting your life at risk, your life on the line, getting an abortion, being told I'm going to literally die if I stay pregnant. You might actually literally die if you get an abortion. So I, I hate how this is so intentionally manipulated through the media. She said on this podcast that she was shocked to find out that her case did not qualify for an emergency exception given the condition of her fetus. Notice how they don't say baby, but as we know, because we talk about this on the stream and on college campuses and in all of our videos all the time, what does fetus actually mean? Basically fetus, all it means in Latin is tiny human, small human. So that's all you need to know about that. But the media will never call these children babies. They have to call them fetus, which it means the same thing as baby or child because they're trying so intentionally to dehumanize people. She said, there's nobody that loves and wants a baby girl more than I do, which you had, but there's no outcomes at this, at the end of this, where I take home a healthy baby girl. I never thought I would ever want or need an abortion, but this is a medical decision and it's what's needed for my health. She and her husband are currently parents to two other children, young children, and they said that they really wanted to have a large family. Interesting. Interesting. And here's what Kate Cox, this mom, had to say sitting down with CBS Sunday morning a couple of weeks ago to tell some of her story in her own words. I wanted to be here close to home. I mean, it's the hardest thing I've been through. I wanted to come home, cry on my own pillow, hold my babies. Um, be near my doctors. So I was really hopeful. That's, yeah. that's really what I thought about most um, going yeah. into this. Some of the people on this other side of the issue say, why not just have the baby naturally and whatever happens, happens? Mm -hmm. I want more babies. I talked with our doctors and I didn't want her to suffer. I felt it was best for her and I felt it was best for our family as well. We want to be able to have more babies. We want to give siblings um, mm -hmm. to our kids. So in other words, because my child has a disability, I don't think it's fair for me to give birth to my child. I'm just interpreting here. So you guys can correct me if I'm getting this wrong. I don't think it's fair for me to give birth to a child that's going to suffer and have difficulties in their life. And I don't think it's fair to my other kids that their sibling is not going to survive very long, theoretically, given this particular diagnosis. Interesting. So if we look actually at the diagnosis of trisomy 18, I think it's important for us to understand what this child was even diagnosed with and told it was 100% a fatal diagnosis for this child in the womb. There was no way that they were going to even survive childbirth. And even on the off chance that she did, she was probably going to die imminently right after that. This is fascinating if you've never done so much research about this. Trisomy 18 is also known as Edwards syndrome. It is not a death sentence, despite what the abortion lobby would have you believe. There are a significant number of children with this condition who have lived for several years past their delivery. Uh, former Senator Rick Santorum's 15-year-old daughter, Bella, had trisomy 18, lived till she was 15 years old. There are tons and tons of children out there living with trisomy 18 who have not been aborted but given the chance to be born. There was a trisomy 18 baby who lived to celebrate her 40th 
birthday as a grown woman. So to suggest that this disability is just inherently a death sentence because it's difficult, because there's going to be suffering, because it's difficult on the family to have a child with a disability, although it's also very joyful and happy and wonderful and a totally unique experience other families don't get to have, because the likelihood of them having a normal life expectancy of 70 or 80 or more years is extremely low. But you know people have lived until their 40th birthday or even 15th birthday is disgusting to me. That there are healthcare practitioners out there trying to lie to you, to your face, and say your baby is guaranteed to die before it's even born or in childbirth or like five minutes after. It's just not even worth it. Let's take care of it right now. When we know empirically from evidence and real stories of anecdotes from real families, that's not always the case. 